Okay, so check this out. That's new. That's new. That's new. Actually, all of this is new. That's new. Inside of here, that's new. Actually, we pretty much have a whole new tailplane. Before we go flying, just a quick summary of what this video is about. As you saw, we had our tailplane upgraded. So I'm going to cover why we decided to upgrade, what exactly the upgrade is, and what improvements you can expect as a result of upgrading. How much of our house money did you spend on upgrades? And even if you don't fly or have interest in the KFA bush planes, anyone with serious backcountry interest in Kitfox type planes might just find this quite informative. I'm reading to the GF because we're going to go do some stalls because I want to check out what difference this new tail makes to the stall performance. So you might remember that um, my usual full flap stall speed is 38 miles per hour. I recently did a video uh, bringing the stall actually down to about 34 miles an hour by tying weight to the tail. So this tail is a little bit heavier so I haven't tied any weight to the tail. This is uh, stock standard, no modifications. So we're going to go see if we can bring that uh, 38 miles per hour stall um, a bit lower or not, I don't know. Uh, it's the first time we're going to do stalls with a new tail. I must say, this new uh, electric trim system makes uh, hands of flying so much easier. I mean, obviously I'm having my hand on the stick, there's a bit of a crosswind. So the reason we upgraded the tail section is because you might remember that before we had the 912 in here, it, it had a, a Rotax 5 very few two stroke engine. When it had that engine in, it was perfectly balanced in terms of center of gravity. So the 912 is obviously about 15 kilograms heavier than the 532. So obviously the center of gravity is going to shift forward. Oops, there goes my uh, compass correction card. That means the center of gravity is going to shift forward. It's still, it was still well within limits. Nothing wrong with it. But it meant that slow flight, uh, like stalls, doing very short landings, we approach very, very slowly, the, the elevator didn't have a lot of authority um, to counteract the, the extra weight of the heavier engine. So this tail section is obviously designed for the bridge baby with the heavier 912. So not only is it a little bit heavier, moves the center of gravity a little farther, further backwards, but also it's a bigger tail. So it's going to give me more elevator authority. As for what exactly the upgrade is, it is done by Kit Planes for Africa, the manufacturer of the Bush Baby. It is thus not a custom upgrade. It's fully tested and it's the same tail that the newest Bush Babies come out with standard. So basically the horizontal stabilizer gets a bigger spar and it gets stronger support cross bracing inside. This all works to stiffen and strengthen the horizontal stabilizer. The elevator is longer and has balance horns on the ends. It also includes electric trim. Then lastly, it's got fences between the balance horns and the outside of the horizontal stabilizer. So what does it change or how is it an improvement over the old tail? Let's see how it affects stall speed and then we'll cover some of the other improvements. Improvements. And I'll be leaving the best improvement for last. So keep watching till the end of the video for that. Stalling, it's stalling, it's not dropping anything, it's just mushing. So let's recover. Alright, and now let's do one two flaps. Power off. 39.
38, that's not stalling. 37, So the power of stall speed is down from 44 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour in clean configuration and down from 38 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour with full flaps. It's worth mentioning that the stalls done to test the new tail was done at a density altitude of 1,500 feet higher than the baseline numbers we're comparing it to due to the change of the season. So this is a very convincing improvement in stall speed. So a slower stall speed in general means you can do a slower approach and land shorter. Another way it now makes short landings easier is because the tail comes down a lot more due to it being slightly heavier but mostly because it's got more aerodynamic authority. If you're not sure why I keep talking about the need for the tail to come down more, it's a notorious thing with these flap-prone type bush planes like the Kit Fox. The more flaps you take, the more it raises the tail. And when you're not loaded with a passenger or baggage in the back and you do a full flaps landing, it raises the tail to such an extent that a proper three-point touchdown doing a power off landing just isn't possible. It will differ from plane to plane of course depending on center of gravity but I mean even Trent Palmer ties weights to the tail of its kit fox to help get it down more with that heavy Rotax 915 up front. And yes I'm using a P51 Mustang for my touchdown illustrations. Want to hear me imitate the sound of a V12 Merlin? How was that? Good, right? I've been practicing. <laughs> That's a fake laugh. So let's see if there's any improvement in the touchdown attitude doing a full stall three point landing. Let's see what I can do. Start dragging it in. Not bad at all. So on a power off landing, the tailwheel almost touches with the mains when I'm alone with no weight in the back doing a full flaps landing. With the old tail, the tailwheel didn't even come close to touching in the exact same configuration. So this is definitely an improvement. You might wonder why all of this even matters and truth be told in normal flying it doesn't but when you want to land as short as possible in the backcountry or even just for fun then all of this becomes very relevant. So what else? The new tail actually ups the maximum all up weight from 550 kilograms to 600 kilograms same as the latest and greatest bush baby that you can buy. So this means an increased useful load. The upgrade also comes with electric trim which I don't think I need to explain but worth mentioning that we didn't have any elevator trim at all before so this is actually quite a nice upgrade for us. And then my favorite improvement over the old tail is the balance horns at the end of the elevator. They are the portion of the elevator in front of the hinge line and reduces the force needed to move the elevator at all air speeds. It's basically power steering for your elevator and it's worth emphasizing how much of a difference it actually makes. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or remarks. Hit that like button if you found this informative and see you in the next one.